Well, hello everyone, and welcome to Friday, July the 19th, 2024. I am Del Delridge, Benchmark Realty, Murfreesboro, Tennessee, and this is your weekly status chat. Don't know if you've experienced it, but today we're having some disruption because of Microsoft and CrowdStrike, and we'll get to it right after this. If you like this content, please go to calldelltosell.com, find the tab that says on YouTube, click it, and it'll open up a page of QR codes. There you can use a smartphone to scan and get to the YouTube page, or you can just mouse over and click it on a PC. There you'll be able to subscribe to this little button over here and click the notification bell so that YouTube will notify you when each Friday's blog has been uploaded. Thank you. Well, all right. Well, here is our first story of today. And it is Microsoft outage, CrowdStrike security update impacts airports, hospitals, banks around the world. And this is from Yahoo News, Katie Mather. Today is it? Yes, today, because it was this morning that I woke up and after having my coffee and kind of getting the cobwebs moving, I went to say, well, it's about middle of the month, a little after, let me go ahead and pay my car payment because I actually have a car payment. By the way, I can't stress this enough just as a personal view, but if I was rolling in the dough, I don't think I would buy a very expensive car because for the most part, you're throwing your money away in about five, six years, 10 years at most is down to just about scrap value. So it's not an investment, no matter, sometimes people, when they want to buy something kind of extravagant, like a fancy vehicle will say, you know, it, it's, it's an investment in my business or investment in whatever. So anything past you, what you need becomes a want that's an extravagant. What if you hit hard times, you have a problem. But anyway, I have a Mazda. So I went in there to Mazda Financial Services, which I think is a division of Toyota Financial Services when I originally did the paperwork and it wouldn't let me sign in. Network, network problem. So that's okay. I got a phone number. I'll call and do it by phone. Nope, the phone system's down. So perhaps the phone system that they're using, Mazda Financial using, may also be on VOIP or voice over internet protocol because it was down, telephone was down. So I said, okay, well, while I'm thinking about it, let me make sure I pay a little extra, pay some on the credit card, and make sure I get that thing down. Nope, that bank was down. What let me have temporary issues, having problems, having problems. And then I went, what else? I went somewhere else. I had to make a phone call. Oh, pay something else online. Nope, no soup for you, Jerry. You're a very bad man. So I turn on the news and I start looking and we have a network problem due to CrowdStrike. Now I remember this name strikes in my brain from past controversies that were out there. And what it brings to mind isn't so much this little article, because we'll get to it. This is a massive technology outage has hit computer systems globally, affecting airlines, hospitals, healthcare providers, 911 call centers. Now that should never happen in my opinion. Banks and other businesses. CrowdStrike, a cybersecurity company founded in 2011, owns more than 10 different security and IT tools according to the company's website, is involved with almost 300 of the Fortune 500 companies, six out of the top 10 healthcare providers, eight of the top financial service firms, and eight out of the top technology firms. So that gives me a little bit of a shudder down my back to see that one disruption can mess up this much problem. So it just says, hey, uh, we got a, we got a, uh, what we used to call a hell loop stuck in a restarting state where it can't get past. Uh, we've seen those before. They're very annoying. What caused it? Well, obviously some kind of a mistake. Cloud service Azure, which resulted in several airlines briefly grounding all flights. So travel was disrupted. And that gets me to some of this dependence on things. Now, now I think you know if you've watched the previous show, I'm not a big fan of AI in every aspect of my life, even if it's just to make my life better. You know, I saw an unofficial report from somebody who had, this is from a, a tertiary source, and they were reporting from someone else, so it's strictly hearsay, but they had, they had an LG dishwasher or something and lg changed their terms of service in their terms of service they were doing this interconnected thing it may have been an oven or something like that and anyway they could pick up their phone you know maybe be in a different room and get a, a beep 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 when the uh, oven had preheated or when the washer had finished i think that's what it was a clothes washer and lg had had put in their agreement that they will take your information and they will sell it and you don't have a choice and your only choice is not to use it. So I wouldn't want to have something that I got used to 
taken away from me if I don't agree to give my personal data, which is then sold, and they're profiting on my habits or whatever I'm doing, the number of loads of laundry maybe I do, number of washes of dishes I do a week, that kind of thing. It's really not in anybody's business, but yet it was there, which brings me to something dealing with my phone. I'm not really off on a tangent. I'm, I actually have a point to this I'm going to get to. My phone can do geo uh, geolocating with the, with the alarm system and it can be programmed so that when I drive away from home it automatically turns it on and when I come in the driveway it knows it's me coming up close so the the geo uh, locating feature then turns my alarm off which is great if it's raining cats and dogs and I got a handful of stuff I don't want to get wet and I jump in and as I'm kind of shaking the water off then the alarm goes whoop 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 nice feature but they're also putting those into cars now it seems like it's a good idea uh, if someone steals your car, makes off with it, and they run down the road and you report it stolen, they can disable the car, locate the car, find the car, recover the car. Sounds like a great idea. But technology can sometimes be abused or hacked. You know, so here's the deal. If you don't pay your car payment and they, they shut off your car, I don't think mine's that sophisticated. But if they do that, that's not a good thing. But maybe you have that coming. But what if we have another virus that comes out and they decide that once again, you are not essential or you cannot drive more than five miles radius from your home. And if you do, they're going to cut it off your car off and you're going to be stranded out there. We're going to have chaos everywhere. They can also do geotiming as going into cars nowadays. And not to mention the fact that insurance that insurance companies are harvesting data. There's one radar app that has been caught selling your driving and speed habits and braking habits to insurance companies. Maybe not on the micro, but certainly they admitted to the macro. So at some point in time, we have to start wondering, are we not setting ourselves up for a potential hard time when we depend this much on technology? I, I just don't know that I trust all good people to remain good people. So it's a little bit of a of a, a scary issue for me that when we give this much type of dependency on technology that it can shut our airlines down and shut our bankings down. Which brings me to my main point that I'm using this article for. There's a party of people out there who are pushing hard for a digital dollar. Now we know that the IRS can seize your bank. They can close your accounts so that you can't get access to them. We can also know that Social Security, if they overpay, they can claw money back from you. If they overpaid you, they can take it out of your account. If they got access to deposit, they can access to take it back away, which bothers me a little bit. So I have a habit, and this is just a personal tip, personal advice. When my son started driving, uh, I kept a 20 in the car at all times, just in case he didn't have any money in his wallet and he needed gas because I don't need him stranded. I live out in the country. What happens is you as an adult, if you get down and they take out, say, the Visa system or the MasterCard system or the banking system and you can't swipe for gas and you're out of gas. What do you do? That's when you reach for your emergency dollar, $20 that you had hidden somewhere in your car, glove box, console, someplace, and pay. What if you're out someplace late at night and they, again, it's the same type of thing. You're at a place, you have to get home, you need a little bit of gas, and you've got no way to do it on that plastic dollar or your digital dollar. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of taking away physical hard currency. All right, so let's look at this one more time and we're gonna to switch to our next news item. This one's from Mishtalk. I looked a number of places. I don't know this website, but this title was originally printed on a different site that kept giving me trouble with pop-up ads all the time. So I went to here instead. Now what this is saying, this is Dateline two days ago, five out of 12 federal districts show flat or declining economic growth. And this of course doesn't have an author attached to it, but it's the same data source that I read, uh, elsewhere on the internet but again servers were going up and down as early as just a little bit a while ago in fact what i was doing was i was trying to find it getting ready to get the show going and then the page just <laughs> failed it went into doing the next batch of advertisements and then the page just disappeared apparently the server had issue well here we have a pretty nice little thing in the middle we didn't have to go to the federal reserve to get the beige book they've summarized it on a map and they're saying that our area the atlanta area which is the gray area right here, is flat. So that's good. That's better than falling behind. Now here we have Richmond is slightly, it's yellow. So I'm assuming that's slightly up. This one 
because we have a gray slightly down in Minneapolis area that that banking zone San Francisco says it's stable Dallas says slightly so they're up a little bit Philadelphia is up slightly Boston they say modest Chicago slightly so in this little network we know that we have five out of 12 now let's read just a little bit further I won't go into this too much let's go to the bullet points seven districts reported some level of increased activity five noted flat or declining activity three more than the pre year prior i'm sorry maybe i had a crowd strike update in my brain last night three more than the prior reporting period so we must add two because i can subtract three from five so this is showing we have some slowing of the economy but it's not horrible so i'm not thinking mr j powell and the banking committee with only seven being flat or down just a tad are likely to have a rush job on dropping interest rates because we're we need to go from qt to qe wages continue to grow at modest to moderate pace in most districts while prices were generally reported to have risen modestly household spending was little to change this period according to most district banks auto sales varied across districts this cycle but some districts noted that sales were lower due in part to cyber attack on dealerships and high interest rates now, i don't think we need to read too much from there but we can come down here and see if we can find the atlanta says Atlanta economic activity was relatively flat, labor market stabilized, wage growth eased, non-labor inputs cost growth slowed or on net, consumer demand remained flat, business and group travels improved, home sales were flat or slightly down, transportation activity was mixed, loan demand was flat, energy activity was mixed, agricultural conditions improved. So it doesn't really sound like in the sixth district down here we're having too much trouble in that particular area we're we're just not growing we're not really sinking so you know there's nothing to really push too hard on j powell to start lowering rates however that's a beautiful segue to this particular show here market watch this article economic report mortgages let me adjust rates fell to lowest level since march a positive sign in the housing market GSE, Government Sponsored Enterprise, Freddie Mac says, published yesterday. Arthi Swaminathan, I apologize, Mr. Swaminathan, if I pronounced your name incorrectly. I do the best I can, and sometimes that's just not enough. 30 year mortgage rates fell on the back of expectations for a federal rate cut. Now, notice what we said right there is the same thing that we've been talking about since December the last of December of 23, when Chairman Powell said that if everything continues to look great, that there is a possibility we're going to see a rate cut in the Q3 of 2024. And we've discussed it. You've known you've seen so much speculation, everybody trying to be the first one to make a prediction of when exactly rates were going to cut. Some the markets gambled. They're trying to outthink the Fed when I don't think the Fed literally knows what they want to do because they're they're looking at the things like the jobs and how many of the districts are slowing. Are they speeding up and what segments of the economy are slowing and all of these things. And I don't think they know it's just too big of a sandwich to eat in one bite. So that's what they're saying here in this market watch episode. Uh, story here report they're talking about it was on expectations of lower rates we haven't seen any movement yet but they have expectations and you know that that could easily turn back around so there we have our last little story that we're going to read on today and just remember you need to prepare for the worst and be willing to accept the best. So right now, it doesn't look like anything is drastically falling off the edge of the earth, nor is it really getting that much greater and wonderful at the same time. It's just pretty well not steady, which has been our song all year. Now let's go back to this story that we're looking at because it's gonna give us some numbers here. The 30 year fixed rate mortgage averaged 6.77 as of July 18th, according to data released by Freddie Mac FMCC on Thursday. That's 12 basis points from the previous week. So we had some volatility the previous week. I believe we come down here further. Here we go. We found it. 
right under this picture, this lovely picture. This is what I'm looking for to put it into perspective. Rates for 30 year mortgage are averaging 6.77 compared with 6.78 in the same period as last year. That's a hundredth of a point. That's one hundredth of a point different than it was year over year. So the mortgage rates have been flat pretty well much with a few rises and falls, but they're pretty well much been about where they were for a year. So there's nothing exciting happening there. Meanwhile, inflation continues to help prop home prices up. All right, well, let's wrap this show up. Hello, oh, I'm Dell Delbridge of Benchmark Realty, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. If you are currently unrepresented and would like to know how to compare up to three properties side by side and room by room, then go over to my new YouTube channel, Call Dell to Sell. That's one L and Dell, no spaces. Watch the demo on Real Scout, and then call me and we'll set up your exclusive ad-free account today. Well, last week, 7, 12 of 24, we had 22,164 opportunities that increased over the previous period. 4330 were the under contracts still showing. They also tipped up just a tad, and the energy ratio between those two numbers remained constant at 20. This week, in the 7, 19, 24, we had 22,514, which is an increase over the previous period in opportunities. We had 4323 in the under contract still showing that decrease slightly, very slightly, and we had 20 percent as the ratio between them. And that's what you get when you're not running Microsoft. It's better to have a short pencil than a long memory any day. All right, well, we appreciate you watching, and we'll see you after a while.